around here are lucky and proud to live in one of America's vacation hotspots. Over here, Beijingers are equally proud to host the Olympics. So how does the average Joe prepare to welcome the world to his home? In this episode, Olympic spirit is taking over this grade school. This elaborate celebration ends with a surprise visit from a gold medal winner. Then preparations continue as folks from age 6 to 86 learn how to welcome their Olympic guests in English. Welcome to Beijing. Plus, if you've got deep pockets, luxury hotels are getting ready to pamper you. Or turn down one of Beijing's oldest alleyways and spend the night in a 19th century Chinese general's quarters. Finally, foreign students in Beijing reveal who they'll be rooting for in the 2008 Olympics. All coming up now on Beijing, are you ready? With the eyes of the world on Beijing for the 2008 Olympics, the entire city is working hard to put its best foot forward. So are its children. Many of the city's schools have integrated the Olympics into their curriculum. The hope is that the coming Olympics will motivate kids to learn about the games and the world community that will arrive in their city. Today is a special day here at July 1st Elementary School in the heart of Beijing, and it's a very big deal to these kids. The students here have devoted a lot of time studying every facet of the Olympics, and today they'll mark the 500-day Olympic countdown with a special ceremony. They spent weeks rehearsing an elaborate performance to celebrate this day. The kids are especially excited today because they've been told that there'll be a special appearance by the official Olympic mascots, the five friendlies. Later on, we'll meet the first friendly and discover its special secret. But first, the national anthem. Now come speeches by the school principal, teachers, and government officials. The speeches go on and on and on, but relief is on the way. The moment they've been waiting for, a special appearance by the Olympic mascots, the five friendlies. There's Bebe. Jing Jing, Huan Huan, Ying Ying, and Nini. Put the names of the mascots together and they form the Chinese phrase Beijing Huan Ying Ni, which means Beijing welcomes you. Inside each mascot is a secret. This one, Bei Bei, is actually the school's music teacher, Huang Wei. It's all in a day's work for this good sport. What could possibly top an appearance by the Olympic mascots? How about a real live Olympic gold medal winner, Chen Hong? She won the 100 meter butterfly swimming competition at the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona. Today in Beijing, she's won the hearts of the children. Quite an achievement considering she's competing against the five friendlies. Uh, 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 As she looks out at the children, Chen Hong sees kids who were about the age she was when she began training for the Olympics. Uh,
pigeons are released as a wish for peace. So far, it's been an exciting day, but it's all been a big warm-up for the main event. Now it's time for the kids to put on their show. It starts with what looks like a carefully choreographed dance with a workout theme. But these kids actually do similar exercises every day. The highlight of the show is the school's ballet program. The dance is designed to evoke the Summer Olympic sports. And the girl in the blonde wig symbolizes the outside world coming to Beijing for the games being embraced by China. The touching thing about this show is the kids seem to be performing for each other rather than the adults watching. The show ends with a symbolic coming together of dragons to illustrate the world coming together for the Olympic Games or the Olympic slogan, One World, One Dream. After all that, you might think they'd call it a day, but you'd be wrong. Well, now that the excitement's over, it's time for these fifth graders at July 1st school to settle down and learn even more about the Olympics through art. Today, the Olympics are integrated into art class under Yang Chunhua's guidance. The kids get to work fast, creating their artistic interpretations of the five friendlies. Like American kids, Chinese kids learn reading, writing, and arithmetic. I've been trying to learn their language for about six months, and it's incredibly difficult to speak. Reading and writing Chinese? Forget about it. Every Chinese word has its own special character. You can't sound out these characters because it isn't a phonetic alphabet. If you haven't memorized the character, you won't be able to read the word. I've discovered that these kids are learning their own language and are trying to beat me at my own game. Every one of them has been learning to read, write, and speak in my language, English. So how old are you? Um, <coughs> ten years old. Ten years old. How old are you? Me too. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Will you, do you love the Olympics? Yes, I like it. English is taught in all Chinese schools, beginning at the elementary level. Despite all the talking, the kids created some amazing art in less than an hour. Now it's time to see their Olympic masterpieces. 
。我做的是福娃晶晶。我做的是福娃妮妮。我做的也是福娃妮妮。我做的是福娃晶晶。我做的是福娃妮妮。我做的是福娃欢欢，我做的也是福娃欢欢，我做的是福娃晶晶，我做的是福娃莹莹，我做的是福娃晶晶，我做的是福娃晶晶。When I think about the celebration we just saw at 7-1 school for the 500-day mark before the Olympic Games begin, I'm impressed with these kids. Not only are they embracing the curriculum they've been given, they really believe that the Olympics are something wonderful for China and they cannot wait for them to start. July 1st elementary school students, along with the rest of the city, anxiously watch the official countdown to 8808. Tiananmen Square is one of China's most recognized landmarks and the center of Beijing. So it's appropriate that the Olympics countdown clock is here, reminding China and the world how long we have to wait for the 2008 Olympic Games. Some Beijingers are happy there are still days remaining. To them, it's extra time to get ready for the city's guests. How do you spend your Saturday mornings? In Beijing, people from 3 to 86 years old spend theirs studying English, just so they can help their Olympic visitors have a better time here. It all started when Dongsa District citizens discovered that the Olympic Organizing Committee was setting up shop right next door. That's when the residents' enthusiasm for the upcoming games kicked into high gear. You work very hard. You're welcome. First, local leaders established Dongsa as the first ever Olympic community, dedicating themselves and the entire neighborhood to putting China's love of the Olympics into action. Then in September of 2003, the English lessons began, free of charge to any resident. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So how are the classes going? Let's find out from the students themselves. Is it difficult? Or easy? Would you please waiting for a moment? Okay. Thank you very much. 我也是感觉着学习英语啊，它的语句跟它的呃发言都有困有难的地方。觉得还是有一点难度。嗯，说一点没有问题，但是讲深了，嗯，说多了就会有难度，还是觉得有难度。但是为了嗯奥运会，我们愿意努力，我们愿意学习。So, how is your English, and are you ready to greet foreigners? 我在努力的学习，我的英文水平还学的还比较嗯不是特别好。但是我呢，要努力的学。嗯，我到时候一定要嗯当好志愿者，用英文呢能够为外国朋友服务。呃，我也很愿意啊，很好的学学好这个英语，因为英语是世界语。Are you ready? 嗯，一般的嗯小问题和嗯基本的知识都可以都可以应对。It's not just the students who are sacrificing valuable weekend snoozing; the instructors volunteer their time too. Each course is 15 weeks long. That's a lot of time, but it's worth it to these folks. This is all part of a larger Olympic program that aims to have 35 percent of the country speaking English by the start of the games. As of November 2006, over 10,000 people had participated in the ambitious language program called English Free to Every Citizen. China. Welcome to Beijing. Welcome to Beijing. Welcome to Beijing. Welcome to Beijing. The chairs are filled with husbands and wives, sisters, and even a mother-daughter duo. It's not just education. It's quality time with the family. Why do you study English with your daughter? 因为那个我我我们是那个因为两八两千零八年嘛，在北京召开奥运会，所以我们呢都是想为那个这个奥运会呢做出一一些自己的贡献。
啊，过那个将来过去有人到中国来，那个就是呃，到中国来的时候呢，我们可以就是做那个做一些力所能及的事情，来帮助他们。Annie, do you like to study English? 喜欢。Why do you like it? 因为英语能让我们说呃跟外国人交流。Hello, what's your name? My name is Li Yuzhen. What's your name? My name is Wang Anyi. How are you? Mm, fine. Fine, thank you. <laughs> I'm fine. 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 I'm happy. Thank you very much. <laughs> these people giving up almost four months of Saturday mornings just to help a lost Olympic fan? Practically speaking, yes, but that's only a small part of a larger dream. These folks have turned out in force so they can personally turn an exchange of cultures into a conversation between friends. Of all the stories we cover with Olympic architects, officials, and athletes, this was the most moving because we saw firsthand the spirit of everyday Beijingers and the meaning the upcoming games have for this country. I can't tell you um, the emotion I felt when I walked in this room and saw this huge amount of people, little tiny kids and senior citizens learning English, practicing phrases like welcome to China and how are you and how can I help you and to think that that this country would say, hey everybody, we're going to volunteer to learn English, we're going to teach English for free, just so that people like me can feel comfortable here. It is so meaningful. Okay, if your pockets are deep and you want true luxury, the Peninsula Beijing Hotel is at your service. The rate for a standard room is about $250. That's their online promotional rate. And the presidential suite is about $5,200. Come on, you're worth it. This high-end hotel is in the heart of Beijing, just a block from the shopper's paradise, Wang Fujing Street. Recently renovated to the tune of $34 million, it has 525 rooms and 57 pricier suites, just in time for the Olympics. The standard suites have spacious living rooms, dining areas, and offices. The bathrooms are equipped with double showers and luxury linens. The standard rooms aren't anything to sneeze at either. Each one comes with its own flat screen TV. And everything in the room can be controlled from the comfort of your bed. And the luxury doesn't stop when you leave the room. Come to the lobby for a proper English tea. I'm not kidding, we have English scones and this is English tea cake with strawberries, clotted cream, and butter, of course. On the second layer, cucumber sandwich, lox and cream cheese sandwich, and a ham sandwich, all with the crusts cut off, of course. On the third layer, chocolate cake, a brandy strawberry tart, pistachio financier cake, and a lemon meringue tart. A beautiful spread like this only costs 110 yuan. That's $14 US. But I tell you what, it'll make you feel like a million bucks. If you haven't completely blown your budget on the room itself, the hotel offers mini courses in Chinese culture, 
from dumpling creation to antique appreciation. Looking to test your newfound knowledge? Try it out at Huang Ting. The high-end Cantonese restaurant in the lower level of the hotel is chock full of antiques. The peninsula Beijing would be at home in any of the world's big cities, from Paris to Chicago. The finer details might have a Chinese flavor, but the language spoken here is instantly recognizable. It's the language of serious money. Of course, cash isn't the only form of communication. That's why this American is teaching his native tongue to fellow employees. And while English training will help them prepare for the wave of Olympic visitors, that's not all they're learning. Training also includes a weekly cultural etiquette class, where hotel staff learns the norms of other countries so that they can provide better customer service. It's not just high-end hotels that are taking on this challenge. The Olympics are a catalyst that will upgrade Beijing's entire hospitality industry. Hutongs are Beijing's colorful ancient neighborhoods characterized by narrow alleys where people walk, shop, and chat in a scene reminiscent of small town porch culture. Lu Song Yuan is one of only six officially recognized cultural hotels in China, a small inn which captures the cultural spirit of China. This one blends right into the scenery. The Lu Song Yuan was built as a home for Zhongling Qing, a 19th century general during the Qing dynasty. The tranquil, airy courtyards must have been a welcome retreat for a war-weary soldier, and they're still peaceful today. This respite has 58 rooms and one suite, ranging in price from $80 to $150 a night. The decor, heavy with burnished woods and rich fabric, evokes China's imperial past, from 14th century Ming Dynasty all the way to 19th century Qing. But the modern amenities are pure 21st century, and they add a touch of luxury fit for a king, not to mention a noble old general. These days, most guests aren't high-ranking members of the Chinese army. 90% of them are Americans and Europeans. That makes English a sought-after skill. In the hotels, we, uh, we try to list every uh, staff to speak English. Oh, really? Yes, especially in the first line. Stuff like yes. front desk, yes. restaurants, they should be speak very, very well English. Mm -hmm. And to meet the needs of Olympic visitors, the hotel is adding amenities to the rooms, like internet access. Still, you can be sure one thing won't change, the exterior. After all, it's the old China look that attracts the customers. But while the Lu Song Yuan is no ordinary hotel, it can't run on historical street cred alone. It takes money to keep a business going. And the Olympics are a dream for the hospitality industry. The Lu Song Yuan plans to make the most of this golden opportunity by offering its guests access to the games in a variety of different languages from the comfort of their rooms, far from the maddening crowds of Olympic sports fans. For Dennis Wei, the 2008 games mean great business opportunities and, of course, longer work hours. But there's an emotional element, too. Olympic games can bring a lot of to the China, to the Beijing. You know, I'm very happy on my life to have uh, one chance to, 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 to see the Olympics in, in our country, in Beijing. I think every Chinese people is feeling like me. Yeah. There's no doubt Beijing has Olympic fever. For many, it's an opportunity to achieve international standards. For others, it's China's moment in the spotlight. But what does it feel like living in the midst of Olympic mania? A panel of foreign university students in Beijing share their on-the-scene impressions of the city's efforts and reveal who they'll be rooting for in 2008. You, you know, the Olympics are coming. Who will you root for? when you watch the Olympics? 
Actually, I think I am going to root for China. Yeah, I, I think I am because I really feel like they've went through so much effort. Yeah. They've put in so much work to make this Olympic right. I mean, this Olympics right. They've, you know, they've they've changed the entire landscape of their city pretty much, yeah. of their capital. And in every city you can find, I, I've been to. I think it was either Luoyang or Zhengzhou. There's a huge soccer stadium. Yeah. You know, everywhere in Beijing you see Olympic, uh, like those little Olympic dolls. You see statues of like Olympians. Mm -hmm. You see the giant Olympic building, and they've just put and it's. Everywhere on the papers, and I even have class uh, chapters in my textbook about it. Hmm. And so I'm just like, I really want them to, to see this go right for them. I don't want to see anything go wrong. I'd probably root for Europe or <laughs> probably Italy, but then other European countries next, and mm. uh, then the rest of the world can come, I guess. I think I'll root for Norway, but we all know it's not going to happen. So I hope China gets all Wales as well. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, how about you? Let's pass the microphone over there. Yeah, going with what Nate said, this country, this city definitely is kind of like coming alive and passionate about the Olympics. So seeing this really go right and would be very cool. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'll put my vote on China as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's it for this episode. Here's a look at what's coming up on the next Beijing Are You Ready? On the next episode, an exclusive look at how the Chinese national gymnastics team prepares for the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games. Then Chinese wushu, or kung fu as it's known in the U.S., is waging its toughest battle, the battle to become an Olympic sport. Finally, how a pentathlon world champion multitasks for a medal at the Beijing Games. That's all coming your way on the next Beijing Are You Ready? From the Forbidden City, I'm Mary Windeshar. We'll see you next time.